User experience design prototyping definitely comes down to two aspects. Uh, qualitative design, where we go in in depth, that's like the thick data here, where we can go in and figure out maybe only a few users, but we get a lot of knowledge about how they act, why they do this, what it is they prefer. And then when we have those, we think, hmm, uh, does this generalize to the uh, larger group of, of users? And then we need uh, big data. Then we need a lot of cases where we go in and figure out yes or no, people do prefer this. And that's where sort of designing with data comes in, frequently uh, simply called A-B testing. Um, but what is so important is that A-B testing is not something you just do like, okay, let's pick some cases and test this versus that, because it all depends on what is it that is uh, your hypothesis? What is it you want to A-B test? And that, of course, relates to the little grade one on top here, which I like. What is the problem you want to solve? What is the, 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 the overall pain which this A-B test should, should give you an answer to? And that, again, would relate to some overall goals. What is it we, we want to achieve? And that's very much like what we've talked about in the running lean thing, where it's in the canvas, you go in and say, what is it that are the pains users have? How do we solve these normally? And who are we? We are a specific segment. So we want to figure out who is it that we want to test this with. And we want to provide some uh, unique value propositions in a prototype. And uh, that prototype will then be, you know, based on on um, this this uh, data informed uh, testing here. So you see, there's little data arrows going into the goal. So that means we say we want to test this, and we do have data supporting this. We do have data supporting these hypotheses, and we can then also generate data to go in and validate uh, A versus be in the actual testing. So what would these cases be like? Well, depends. Um, some simple aspects could be like saying the problem for Netflix is that they have a lot of content and they want people to view more of their content. So how should they present this? So you could have some nice little ABs, which is like, hmm, the most important thing is a menu. People want to figure out what category movies they want. Or you could say it's all about the content. You should have this sort of flat thing here where you can scroll through a lot of movies and you immediately see how many stars, what's the rating of this, what, what is this about. Or it could be completely different. It could be, hmm, Shouldn't it be more like this total splash screen here, which gives you a feeling of, of the sentiment and the contents of, of the movie rather than these little uh, nano-sized DVD covers? So a way to look at this is to say, where are you in sort of this space? Are you into evaluation, which would be towards the bottom, or are you into exploration towards the top? And in the left part of this thing here, it's really about something where you know what this is about. So I'm quite sure Netflix know what they're doing. They know their users. They are kind of optimizing locally. What would be best, a menu or browsing like this or having having these sort of huge images? Maybe the huge images would be a little more towards the explorative side. But anyway, these are, let's say, simple questions. Uh, totally unlike what we're talking about if we want to create new types of mm, cognitive interfaces. How do we create apps, bots, whatever, which understand what we're saying, uh, which interacts with us? This is uh, completely uncharted territory. And then we're into this sort of exploratory thing where you say, we need to test that in different ways. So as an example, this little case here, uh, a health kit app, for heart disease patients. And that sounds uh, fairly simple, but that's hugely complex to do. And this is why when, when doing that, we need to understand what is the whole, let's say, patient journey. What is it 
to be a heart disease patient. And then you would use a scoping tool like user story mapping, which very much complements this uh, both um, qualitative and quantitative approach. So a user story map, that's like this outline here, you see. And this would be kind of only part of the story. In this particular case, this is the user story seen from the patient's view. So we try and avoid that the patient goes into hospital and we figure out the little blue ones on top. These are the goals we want to achieve. Um, and we try and then underneath the blue ones, we have the yellow ones, which are the activities. So the activities are these very active things like measure, do this, whatever. But you know, it's, it's never an outcome to say you measure something. The blue ones are about why do you do this? What is it that you want to do? And then you can see the blue ones kind of separate the yellow ones. And this means that vertically speaking, we try to avoid dependencies like in object oriented design. We only want to validate what is needed and we don't want to validate this whole square here, which is, which is enormous. And then underneath we have the little white tasks and the tasks uh, corresponds more to the iterations, which we will do in the actual prototyping. So this is a question of mapping out in detail. What is it we want to achieve? And maybe in this case here with the patient, what we want to achieve is uh, something like uh, uh, lowering the costs or improving their uh, treatment and, and so on. But it, maybe it, it just all comes down to in the beginning, getting the patient on board. The patient is the one who uses this app. So what should he do? So you can see here, it says that, that um, it should create kind of a timeline. So uh, if you're familiar with apps like Moves, which go and say you are here at this point, and then it builds like a little metro line of, of, uh, of stations where you went to the supermarket or you went to work or something like this. And here you just go through the tasks which you need to do in terms of measuring what should all otherwise have, have been done uh, in the hospital. And this means that this, all these little tasks serves as input for designing the actual wireframes. You could not design the wireframes without this because this is the whole picture. You, you need to do all these things in the wireframe. And that also means that uh, if you would have something like a complementary nurse app, then that would have similar levels of or detail as in this one, but that would be, okay, the patient does all these things, then what can the doctors and nurses get out of it? And they don't want the same interface, they want interfaces with their data and, and um, maybe trend lines for is the patient doing better or worse, or should there be some sort of alert that a patient is now, based on what he does, uh, classified as, you know, um, having problems and, and the the nurse or later stage the doctor needs to step in. So that shows something about how complex it actually is to build these prototypes. And that's why we need these types of uh, scoping tools. We need them in terms of, of saying when we have data, what is it that we want to validate? There are some very clear cut cases. But on the other hand, you could say, uh, this does not do the thing alone. It's really a complementary thing to the qualitative data. And in order to achieve that, you very often have to map out these very, very detailed story maps.